Hello and welcome on back everybody. Today I've got something special for you guys. Something you may have thought you'd never see on my channel and that is my own Magicka Sorcerer build. This is a pretty sweet build. We have stacked as much Magicka as we possibly can on this bad boy so that we have a very, very strong damage shield as well as great firepower to go with it. This build also has really good sustain and it is one of, if not the most mobile Magicka classes in PvP, which allows you to uh, excel a lot in Cyrodiil where I think some other Magicka classes can struggle because they just can't move fast enough compared to their stamina counterparts. This build is very easy to put the gear together for and we've got a written guide to it at ChristopherESO.com if you guys want to check that out. As always, if you guys enjoy this build, hit that like button. It helps out a lot with growing the channel. Hit that subscribe button if you guys want to stick around and enjoy more content. And without further ado, let's take a look at that build. So, to start off, we are a Breton on this guy. In the live gameplay, I'm actually a Khajiit on this Sorcerer. Um, that is not the ideal race. I think Breton or High Elf are going to be your best two options. Dark Elf is not a bad choice either. Khajiit isn't terrible, especially for a build like this. We do really benefit from even the max hit points that they gain, because in order to make our damage shield as big as possible, we need to have a certain amount of hit points to go with it. So it's not awful, but I'll be honest, it's not as good as the Breton or Altmer options. Now, taking a look at the stat page, let's take a look at that Maximum Magicka. 58k Magicka, very nice stuff. Now on the back bar, we only have 48k Magicka, so we gain about a 10k Magicka boost when we swap to our front bar weapon. We've got 24k HP and 16.5k stamina. This hit point value is very important because the shield that we can use scales from 60% of our maximum hit points at the most. So if we don't have 24k HP, we cannot have a 14k damage shield. Yeah, so you gotta have 24k HP and then the 16.5k stamina, really, really nice on a Magicka build, especially a light armor build that can roll as much as this one can. Thanks to Arcane Alacrity, we can really push this stamina bar and our stam sustain to allow us to roll around a whole bunch. Now, taking a look at the other side of things, our sustain, we buff up with our potion here. We've got 2,411 Magicka recovery, 666 health recovery, and 1,283 stamina recovery. Really good sustains all around. We're a Breton too, so this is actually even on the high end for Magicka recovery. If you really wanted, you could take off some recovery glyphs and replace them with spell damage if you wanted to deal a little bit more damage. Now, let's take a look at our offensive stats when we buff up here. We've got 2,942 spell damage. We are, of course, running an infused weapon spell damage glyph on the back bar. So we buff up to 3.5k spell damage when we attack someone with our resto staff. And then we've got 28.4% spell crit with 8,671 penetration. So we don't have a ton of spell damage, we don't have a ton of crit, and we don't have that much pen either. Pretty much the damage from this build is coming from that insane maximum magicka pool. And then when we take a look at our resists, we've got some pretty decent resists. Switching to the front bar, we actually have the major and minor resist buff. So this is the bar where you cast your damage shield from as well. 24k uh, spell resist and 18.5k physical resist with 2361 crit resist. Now these go down by about 3000 for your spell and physical resist when you switch to the back bar because we no longer have the bound armaments on that bar. So not too insane amounts of uh, durability on this mag sork. I mean, it's not bad, but it's definitely not like we're building into physical spell resist. Again, a lot of our durability comes from that big fat damage shield. Now, taking a look at our uh, Mundus that we're using, I have got the Mage. The Mage Mundus is the option if you want to push as much maximum Magicka as possible. You could actually run the Lover here though if you wanted to and just have slightly smaller shields and your damage will be a little bit better with the Lover than the Mage. And then of course when we take a look at the food that we're running, we have got the Clockwork Citrus Filet. This is going to give us max health, max Magicka, health recovery, and Magicka recovery. The Witch Mother's Potent Brew is a great budget option to the Clockwork Citrus Filet. If you guys don't want to spend the money, this food is becoming very expensive as uh, the game gets older and older. So running the cheap option is definitely not bad, especially since health recovery is halved in PvP now, and we don't stack a ton of health recovery on this build. The potion that we're using is the Tri Restoration Potion, restoring all three resources and giving us the major recovery buffs to all three of our resources as well. Again, I would highly recommend using Using this potion uh, just for the sustain, especially the stamina sustain provided from it is very important. 
but you could get away with just using plain old Magicka potions on this build if you wanted to. Um, just don't expect to be doing a lot of solo combat then. Now let's take a look at the gear we're running to get this big Magicka pool. The first set that we have is Dama House. This is going to give us a one piece maximum stamina and maximum Magicka. And we've actually paired that with the Swarm Mother's Pauldron, which does the exact same thing. The combination of these two is really nice because it not only gives us that max mag, but the stam is super important to staying alive in PvP. So that goes a really long way. The next set that we have is the Crafty Alfique. This is going to give us a huge amount of maximum Magicka, 2,550 on the 5 piece, and then the 2, 3, 4 piece are also max mag. You could switch this out for something like Necropotence if you want to run a pet with this build, but I like Crafty Alfique more because you don't have the restrictions of having to run a pet. It's really about if you're using the pet or not, switch to the Necropotence set. And then of course we have the 3 piece Ancient Grace to pair with it. The two piece gives us max mag and the three piece is 2,406 maximum magicka. So again, just pushing more of that max mag. And then on the front bar, we've got the Inferno Staff of Willpower for 1,752 more Maximum Magicka. When we take a look at the back bar, I actually have a Marauder's Haste Staff. It doesn't really matter what set this staff is from. All that's really important is that you get a two-piece Magicka recovery on the back bar. Now, that is your awesome budget build option. If you guys have the Black Rose Restoration Staff, you can definitely use that here instead. In the footage, I don't actually use Healing Ward, but if you have that staff I would recommend using healing ward instead and slotting the black rose staff on your back bar instead of the uh, two-piece magicka recovery but for the budget option I mean there are tons of different sets that have the two-piece maximum magicka and there are tons of different crafted sets like seducer so you can just make this staff for yourself too now taking a look at the traits and the enchantments on our gear we'll start with this staff here we've got infused weapon and spell damage i love having an infused weapon and spell damage restoration staff because the restoration staff light attack is instant even at a distance it's an instant attack making it very easy to proc this and then switch to our front bar and retain the damage and healing bonus that we get from this the Inferno Staff I have Sharpened and uh, with a Shock Damage Glyph. Sharpened, of course, is going to be the best in slot option for damage in PvP. Um, and then we've got the Shock Glyph because it can not only deal additional damage, but it has a small chance to apply minor vulnerability to your target, which will increase the damage you deal to them by an additional 5%. When we take a look at the jewelry, it is left full arcane. This is awesome for uh, one big reason. You don't have to transmute any of the Ancient Grace jewelry for this build. You can just buy the jewelry, purple or even gold. It's fairly cheap to buy and appears in the PvP vendor every now and then. And uh, leave it arcane and throw the enchant glyphs that you need on it. And that's pretty much it. We've got one stamina recovery and two magicka recovery in chance. This is to give us the sustain values that we have. If you're going to play this build on a different race, uh, something like a Khajiit, which I was playing, you're going to want to run three magicka recovery glyphs instead, for example. Um, the magicka recovery on this build, you actually want to aim for about 2,600 to 2,700 or so if you're not a Breton. Now, taking a look at the gear that we have, we've got a mix of impenetrable and well-fitted. Three impen on our big pieces and then four well-fitted on the little pieces. Now, I did try running infused on the big pieces so we could push even more max stat, but I'm not going to lie, the impen is a much better option here. We don't get that much additional stat out of infused. Compared to the amount of defensive utility that impenetrable offers, I think this is a much better option. Um, and if you don't want to run that much impen, honestly, you could run full well-fitted on this build. Arcane Alacrity will severely cut the cost of Roll Dodge for your Magicka build, so Well Fitted allows you to push that even further. And as you can see here, when we pull up the Advanced Stats tab with the Damage Shield up, we get down to a 1681 Roll Dodge cost on the Mag Sork. So it goes a really far way for our Stamina Sustain. In the footage that I actually played, I only had one Well Fitted on, and I really felt it. I also forgot to put on the Arcane Alacrity passive, so... Yeah, if you have these things on your mag sork, your stamp sustain should be pretty good. And then, of course, for the glyphs that we have on this build, I actually have two uh, Hacky Joe glyphs on the head and the chest, and then everything else is just maximum magicka. The reason that I have this combination of glyphs is because you want to hit these stat values of about 58k magicka and 24k health. And, of course, a great budget option if you don't want to spend the money on these uh, tri-stat glyphs is to go with one health glyph and one magicka glyph on these big pieces. 
You won't get that additional stamina, which definitely helps in a long fight, but you'll still be able to play the build at about the same power without having to spend as much money on it. And the last thing I want to mention is that we have one medium, one heavy, and five pieces of light in our gear. This is important because of that undaunted passive to give us 6% additional max stat. We are running a max magicka build, so that max stat is incredibly valuable because of how much magicka we can actually stack. Now, when we take a look at the abilities that we're running on this build, starting off on our front bar, which is our fire staff bar, we have got Crushing Shock as our first ability. This is going to be your primary spammable for the build. It will also interrupt and set off balance and stun an opponent if they're casting something. This is really good to prevent opponents from rezzing at a distance. Um, you can't always be on top of people, so the ability to interrupt at a distance is incredibly valuable in PvP. And the tooltip on this is not half bad. I mean, when we buff up with our uh, with our Surge here, we've got well over a 10k tooltip on Crushing Shock, almost actually an 11k tooltip. So you can combo this with your other Sork skills like Curse and Frag to deal a lot of damage. The next ability we have is Crystal Fragments, coming in at a whopping 12.7k tooltip. And then, of course, when you cast uh, other Magicka abilities while on your front bar, your frags can have an instant cast proc that deals 66% more damage and costs half as much Magicka. So this frags tooltip gets up to about 20k. That is a massive amount of damage. And uh, not to mention, if you just hard cast this, you can actually chain it in with a Force Pulse at a distance to get a pretty snappy combo too. I've really enjoyed using Crystal Frags on the Sork. It's pretty much your Glock ability where you want to crank someone for a lot of damage. You throw the frags on them. Now the next skill we have is Hardened Ward, and this is your primary defensive skill for the build. It is the big reason why we've stacked so much Maximum Magicka for that 14.2k damage shield. And what makes this so useful in PvP is that just casting this one skill will give us an additional 14k of damage that our opponent has to deal in order to hurt us. It's like a free 14k heal or even an overheal because it's a damage shield on top of your health. Um, there's not a lot of skills that you can heal yourself with that will consistently give you this amount of defensive power at all, regardless of what class you're on. So this is really good, not only because the shield is so strong, but we're on an offensive build with such a powerful damage shield. For this build, you don't have to run multiple damage shields. You could if you wanted to, but we don't have a ton of bar space. And I'll be honest, having a 14k shield by itself is more than enough, especially if you're going to pair some heals with it too. Now, the next ability we have is Inner Light. This is mostly here for that passive slot. It's going to give us 5% additional max mag plus 2% for the uh, Mage's Guild passives. So 7% maximum magicka for having this. And then we also get the Major Prophecy buff on our front bar too. We can also use this for a stealth detect, but we're a magicka sorcerer and we have streak, which is usually the better option if you're trying to pull someone out of stealth. The Inner Light can be useful though if you want to prevent an opponent from recloaking by uh, hitting them with that stealth detect debuff. Now, the next ability we have is Bound Aegis. This, again, is a passive slot, too. We get an 8% increase to our maximum Magicka, and we get Minor Resolve, which will increase our physical and spell resist by almost 3k. This is actually pretty nice to have on our front bar because our damage shield is on the front bar, so if you're doing a lot of offensive gameplay and you just keep refreshing your shield to tank, you can actually be a little bit more durable on your front bar than your back bar, so not terrible in that regard. Um, don't use this skill though. Honestly, the block mitigation is not super beneficial. We're not spec'd into blocks, so you're just kind of wasting resources if you activate this in a fight. It is again there for that passive slot. The combination of these two abilities gives us a 15% maximum magicka boost. You could run just one of them if you wanted to. If you're just going to use one, I would recommend Inner Light so you keep that uh, offensive buff. And you could run a second damage shield or another offensive skill here if you want. Um, that being said, our firepower is really good because of how high the Magicka is, so I would recommend keeping these and trying it out before you decide to take them off. And then finally, for the ultimate on our front bar, we have got Ice Comet, and I'm going to buff up for you guys on this guy too. 20k Ice Comet tooltip, very, very nice. And then on top of it, when it uh, hits your opponent, it will snare everyone around them for 50% uh, for 5 seconds, and it leaves a nasty frost dot damage ability on the ground too. Now, the one downside with Ice Comet is that an opponent can block a majority, if not all, of the damage from this, 
by just blocking. And uh, that is very tough to deal with if you're not a sorcerer. The reason I like using Ice Comet on a sorcerer is because we have Streak. If you throw the Comet down and then Streak through your opponent, they cannot block the Streak, they cannot dodge the Streak, so you guarantee that they're going to get hit by your Ice Comet. If I wasn't on a class that had a uh, stun that could go through someone's block, I would not recommend using this ultimate. But because we're a Sork, it ends up being very good. If you don't want to use Ice Comet, I really like actually Dawnbreaker to Dawnbreaker of Smiting on the front bar. It's a really good option, not only for the stun, but the amount of damage it does can be comboed really nicely too. And then, of course, you can't go wrong with something like Overload on your front bar either. I mean, Power Overload is going to give you a ton of additional damage on all your combos. I mean, look at this 13k shock damage tooltip on the light attack. That's an insane amount of damage. So you've got a few options for your ultimate on the Sorcerer on your front bar. You can have a lot of fun with it. Um, but I picked Ice Comet for that big burst damage that it deals, and of course, 2% additional Magicka for being a uh, Mage's Guild skill. Now, when we take a look at that back bar, the uh, Resto Staff Bar, the first ability we have is Haunting Curse. This is going to be your primary combo starter for the build. You set the curse on the opponent, and then after 3.5 seconds, it explodes and hurts them for 12k magic damage. So a pretty decent tooltip on this. Now, of course, if you're on your front bar and the curse goes off, it will actually deal more damage than if you're on the back bar. The amount of damage that you deal with an attack is based on the bar that you're on. So up to a 14.5k tooltip once we switch to the uh, front bar here. The curse is nice because we can combo it with a lot of our different attacks. I mean, you can do a curse even into a hard cast frags and then crushing shock or a proc frags crushing shock and you can hit people for an insane amount of damage with this build. Not to mention even just curse into something like streak is really good too to ensure that they take that damage and can't avoid it. Now, the next ability that we have is Critical Surge, and this is going to be access to our major sorcery buff, as well as healing every single time we land a crit. Uh, 4k base healing on Critical Surge, so it's a pretty decent amount of healing every one second while we're in combat too. Um, really good buff all around, I think. If you don't want to run Crit Surge here because you don't like the healing from it, you could actually go for the uh, Mage's Guild Entropy skill too. It's kind of up to the user, again, what you want to use. I personally think Crit Surge is the better skill because of the things that it offers you defensively, not to mention it has a very long 33 second duration on the buff. Now, the next skill we have is Rapid Regen. This is our primary heal for the build. In combat, you actually won't use a heal super often while you play Magsork. Only when your shield is broken and you take a lot of damage, you're going to go into your shield again and then heal underneath your shield. Um, Rapid Regen is just the best heal I think that Restoration Staff has access to. That being said, if you have access to the Black Rose Restoration Staff, I would highly recommend going for the Healing Ward. Healing Ward is going to be great because it will apply the major mending buff to you thanks to that Black Rose Resto Staff, and it's a damage shield too, so the combination of Healing Ward when you're low HP and the Harden Ward can give you enough of a shield to fully cover your hit point bar. Again, it's kind of up to the user which heal you want to use. Healing Ward is also much more expensive than Harden Ward, and I think that's something worth mentioning too. Now, the next ability we have is Streak. This is your primary mobility skill as well as your primary stun for the build. We've gone with the Streak Morph because we need the stun from it, especially if you're running Meteor on your front bar. You want to make sure you have an unblockable stun like Streak to combo with it. Now, Streak becomes a lot more expensive as you spam it more and more, which means that you can't use it forever, but at 58k Magicka, we have the Magicka pool required to Streak for a very long time before we run out of resource. It deals a decent amount of shock AoE damage when you use it and it stuns the opponents. This can be nice as kind of like a finishing move if your opponent's very low on hit points and rolling away from you, the Streak can catch them. In short though, Streak I think is one of, if not the best skill that uh, a Sorcerer has access to, and without it, Magicka Sork would just not feel the same. Now moving on to our next skill, we've got Boundless Storm. This is here for the major armor buff that it provides, as well as the major expedition buff um, to increase your movement speed by 30%. Movement speed is very important for PvP, so having a uh, speed buff attached to your armor buff is a really good pairing. It'll also deal AoE shock damage to everyone within 5 meters of you. It's not a massive radius, but if you have opponents on top of you, it does a good job proccing your crit surge, giving you a little bit more healing power when you're getting overwhelmed. Now. For the ultimate on the back bar, I've gone with Suppression Field. 
You can go for either morph of negate uh, magic that you want here. The suppression field, of course, is going to deal damage to the opponents in it, whereas the absorption field is going to heal you while you stand in it. Both are really good options. And uh, the reason we have negate is, of course, because it is such a powerful counter ultimate to other ultimates in the game, as well as Magicka builds in the game. It prevents all opponents from using Magicka skills while they're inside the negate. I can't stress enough how powerful this is for PvP. There's a lot of people that play Magicka builds, especially when you're playing in group combat. Things like healers are usually on Magicka builds. Negate also has a ton of use if you're playing in larger fights because you can drop a negate on the enemy stack and it makes it very easy for your group to then push in and put a lot of hurt into them. Negate is pretty much the trump card of ultimates. I've enjoyed using it a lot, and I would highly recommend if you play Magicka or even Stamina Sorcerer that you try out Negate and see what it can offer you. Now, let's take a look at the champion points that we're running on this build. Of course, we've got all our passives in our trees here. Thanks to the new champion system, you actually have to spend a lot less... Uh, points in order to fill out all of your champion passives. I think you need about 1400 total CP in order to have a max passive here as long as as well as your five as well as your four stars slotted up top. Now let's take a look at the stars that we're using. The first one that we have is Arcane Supremacy for additional maximum magicka. Makes sense we're playing a max mag build. The next one we have is Master at Arms for increased damage with our direct damage attacks by 2% per stage. All of our attacks are direct damage, so this is a very good star for us to slot damage-wise. Then we've got Deadly Aim to increase the damage we deal with single target attacks by 2% per a stage. Again, very good because all of our attacks are single target attacks too, so this will give us a big bonus to those attacks. And then finally, we've got some resilience for that additional critical resistance. You can't go wrong with this in PvP, especially with how powerful crits are in the game right now. I think that having the resilience slotted in your blue tree really, really helps. Now let's move on to the red tree. Again, you want to put all the passives that you can in here, focusing, I think, a lot on roll dodge reduction. Um, if you're a mag sork, this goes the uh, furthest out of all the different stars you can kind of put in here. And then sprint cost reduction is really nice too, as well as the additional sprinting movement speed. Now let's take a look at the stars that we're using. The first one we have is Rejuvenation, 150 Health, Magicka, and Stamina Recovery. That is awesome for PvP. The next one that we have is Boundless Vitality for an additional 1400 maximum health. Um, that is important because our shield, again, scales off of how much max health we have too. So we need to have a certain amount of health in order for our shield to be the most effective version of itself. And then we've got Arcane Alacrity. While under the effects of a damage shield, your roll dodge costs 800 less. This is massive. I cannot stress enough how powerful this passive is. It has a huge impact, especially on Magicka builds, especially on something like this Sorcerer, which has such a big damage shield that you can keep up pretty much all the time. This will help save your stamina bar. So this is the most important passive, I think, out of everything that we have from our champion tree. And then finally, we've got Bastion for 15% increased effectiveness of our damage shield, as well as 15% increased damage against opponents with damage shields. Really nice for countering enemy Sorks, as well as keeping ourselves strong. And then, of course, in the green tree, guys, there is pretty much nothing that you need for combat here. The only one I would recommend is the Steed's Blessing for the 20% movement speed while you're not in combat. You're not always in combat while you're in Cyrodiil, so this can be a very useful star. And then you can't go wrong with the passive break fall, 35% reduced fall damage. If you're a sorcerer and you're streaking everywhere, you will probably not regret having the points here um, to keep yourself from dying. And there you go, guys. That is the build. All right, guys, so let's jump straight into that PvP commentary for our first fight here. We're hanging out outside this enemy blue keep, and this guy runs up behind us, hits us with a couple attacks. We just curse him up, poke him, 10k curse to finish him off as he tries to roll away there, and then we move right away onto the next target, an enemy Templar. We curse her up right away, start feeding her the force pulses, streak into her for that stun, and uh, turns out she was actually a sorcerer, but we still get the kill on her. And then right away, more blue players jump on top of me. I throw the negate down and streak through them to stun them inside the negate. And you can see right away how just throwing that negate down, people don't want to enter it. Even stamina builds, they can't use their utility mag skills like a Nightblade to cloak away. So they're very hesitant to enter it. It kind of gives me a little bit of a field that I can hold out. And then after a few streaks to break some distance, I just start poking the group again here. They're all charging this way, but we are on a Magicka Sorcerer, so I just streak directly through them. We go for a good roll there, actually taking quite a bit of damage, pop our heal, go into the damage shield, 
and then we're just going to make a few streaks here to break a little bit more distance from them and uh, I try to lure them away from the resource here and away from the keep because there's a lot of reinforcements coming out of it and it looks like four blue players chase me up top that one streak I think we stunned everybody with it and then we just head back towards these rocks and now I think we've got some good terrain to try to start picking this fight we start by hitting the uh, the first Meteor combo into the Curse and the streak on that player. We nuke him from almost full health and right away we keep that damage shield up. Manage to absorb the ultimate from that enemy uh, Mag Blade there and she goes down to the Curse as we drop down the uh, bottom and this guy just got rezzed. We just hit him with a Force Pulse into the Frags to finish him off and now we start moving on the next target. We put the Curse on him, hit him with the Force Pulse. He goes down very quickly and now we've got just our last opponent left to fight here. And this guy ends up being uh, pretty tanky. He's he's a little trickier to bring down. Uh, I drop the meteor on him and I streak through him. He does a good job responding with the stun break right away. And he's feeding us a lot of wrecking blows. The best way you can fight someone who's doing this is just constantly move behind them. There you see we hit him with a few good attacks while he's trying to wrecking blow us. Streak through him to try to hit him with that stun into the poke. But he responds well going into his back bar, blocking and healing up. He finally gets that wrecking blow stun off on us. We've just been kind of trying rolling him and kiting behind him we quickly break it and then I get another good streak through him here hit him with the uh, with the uh, curse into the frags unfortunately he very quickly manages to heal up again he goes into his ultimate to try to trap us but we are on a mag sork he doesn't have that much damage though this guy is very very tanky versus uh, high damage so we can just sit in his ultimate if we'd wanted to we could have retreated out of that too and uh, I just quickly hit him with the Force Pulse, interrupting the res that he attempts right away. And we're just going to keep the pressure on top of this guy. We end up going for that Meteor into the Streak combo. And is it enough damage? Yes, even through... Uh, he doesn't have the Stam actually left to block, but we bring him down. Um, I did want to show that whole fight against the Warden because it kind of stresses the one big weakness that I find Mag Sword has, and that's an opponent with Purge. When they're constantly purging your curse, it becomes really, really hard to take them down. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of rock, paper, scissors there. Now, for the next fight, I'm battling a bunch of blue outside of this outpost here, and these guys are putting up a lot of pressure on me. And uh, you really get to see what Magsor can do kind of defensively. We've got that big damage shield, a pretty decent heal. And you can see they're just chewing through my damage shield so quickly. We get a good streak, stunning a majority of players in the group there. And they all jump back on top of me. I head for a kite back around these rocks, resetting the shield and uh, just keeping that shield up as often as possible. We go for three streaks to move to a little bit better terrain and try to split these guys up as much as possible. But unfortunately in this fight, they don't really split up for me. These guys keep a lot of pressure on top, just kind of holding the resto staff heavy attack, waiting to see if anyone will engage. And the blue group seems to have run off to uh, something else that's interested them. So I just start poking them from the side, trying to get people's attention. The uh, there are a few yellow players actually battling it out there. We're going to go for a few Resto Heavies to get a little bit of Magicka back. I was a Khajiit on this build, so my Mag Sustain is not as good as it would be with the Breton. And there you see, finally, the enemies notice me. They jump on top. The Nightblade starts hitting me with the Ambushes. We just retreat a little bit. We've got the Nightblade all by herself. We hit her with a really good heavy attack into the Frags there. And then we clock her with one more uh, Frags, I think, after that Streak stun. And she goes down. Sorry about the tree in the way and the rest of the blue group jumps right on top. I drop the negate and streak through it right away. Refresh my shield, we're kind of a little low there, and um, we managed to catch this enemy healer inside the negate. We put good damage into him. He decides to start retreating away from there. We hit him with that streak stun as he tries to get away, and then one force pulse to bring him down. Just uh, go back around the tree here, reset my buffs, and we're gonna see uh, more blue players coming to engage. The enemy Stam Sork here is very annoying with his streak. He's landing a lot of stuns on us. So in this fight here, we really get pushed on our stamina bar. Again, I did not have the Arcane Alacrity uh, in this footage. I also only had one well fitted on. So the Stam Sustain that we have here is not as good as what you guys will experience if you put your passives together properly like I forgot to. And uh, we're just trying to keep kiting these guys around, trying to keep our shields up. We try, I'm actually trying to get a good combo on this enemy Stam Sork. I throw the Meteor down, we streak through him, and we start feeding the Force Pulses in. We uh, did more damage to the other player, though, that was hit by that Meteor. The enemy Stam Sork responded very quickly and healed up against it. 
and you can see that they're just keeping a lot of pressure on me. Um, streak being such a good tool, not only just to get to a safe location, but the fact that we're stunning everything as we uh, go through there makes a huge difference in these fights. We get hit by a uh, bow knockback there. I just quickly retreat back into the rocks. Um, trying to see if any of the blue will follow, but they're just being very patient waiting up top. The enemy Templar feeding us with the full health radiant destruction. Love seeing it. We go back into the rocks here and one enemy player ends up following us. I hit him with that curse. We streak through him, but we've got more enemy players jumping in the rocks. It's getting uh, kind of tight here. We get a good stun off on that enemy uh, Stamblade as he tries to jump on top of us. And then we just kite back around the rocks, reset our buffs and we're going to re-engage with these guys. They are attacking pretty hard, but they seem to be fairly organized because as soon as they stop, all of them stop attacking me. And here you can see this enemy healer up top goes for the full health radiant. We are going to punish her for that with the bash into a few force pulses, and she goes down. Lots of direction change as we try to kite them out here. We don't want to be uh, running away from our opponent as opposed to running through them because it forces them to turn around. A couple really awkward streaks to get up the uh, top here. It didn't move us much, but I really wanted that AoE stun because it's very, very important defensively. And we did manage to get a bunch of good stuns there. And uh, the enemy players, man, they are putting a lot of pressure on me here. When I was doing this fight, my heart was pounding. This was one of my earlier fights on the Magsork. And man, it was stressful having all these guys chase me around so much. There goes the enemy negate too. We're finding ourselves lower and lower on stamina. But I managed to get back to a safe spot behind some rocks. Reset my shield and my buffs. We curse up that one player. Unfortunately, we can't stick that combo out because he moves into a position where uh, we're not going to be able to. We get a really good stun on the enemy Stam Sork there, but again, he managed to make it to the heal in time, and we aren't able to capitalize the combo. Um, and the uh, the curse, I believe, wasn't on him there too. And the Stam Sork is the one that's really hard on our tail here, so we hit him with that curse. We start feeding him the frags. He dodges that attack. The enemy Nightblade jumps on top of us. I quickly curse the enemy Nightblade. Hit him with that streak into the frags. We do really good damage to her. She dodges the frags, actually, and then it's just one more Force Pulse poke to catch her as she uh, doesn't. A she isn't able to get back into stealth. Drop the negate on top of the enemy healer. Streak into him to stun him, and then just feed him the Force Pulses to bring him down. Really good stuff. And as we come around the side of the uh, rocks here, we manage to get another kill on a player at the back of the enemy group. We do eventually die here, but there are no more kills from us and it takes a while for us to go down so I'm just going to cut the rest of that clip and we'll get to our very last fight for you guys here as we say our goodbyes. I'm sorry I don't have that much footage for the Mag Sork. I only played it for two or three days and uh, honestly it's Magic and Necromancer time. I wanted to move on to something so I was a little impatient and I didn't get quite as much footage as I would have liked to but nonetheless I hope that you guys enjoyed the build and the fights. We of course feature the top five PvP battles as well as featured builds on the channel so if you guys want to send in clips for the top five or a build video you guys can send that to ChristopherESO at Hotmail.com. You can check out my website ChristopherESO.com for written guides to this build and all my other builds as well as a hub for all of my ESO content. Give me a follow on Twitch if you guys want to catch that live gameplay and of course follow me on Twitter if you guys want to keep up to date with me we are sponsored by what the fast they're a vpn for gamers they can give you better ping to your favorite games and they're free to try for the first month a link down below in the description for you guys and then last but certainly not least a massive thank you and shout out to all of my patrons on patreon without you guys i wouldn't be able to do this job so thank you everybody so much for supporting thank you everybody so much for tuning in and watching i hope that you guys enjoyed this video as always have a great night everyone and i'll see you next time